Albert Sean is a cousin to every football manager player's nightmare. No, it's true. Not as menacing as Erling, but with both having a similar youth path, scoring a lot of goals for Berna and moving to Molde, the next step in their careers were crucial. Holland, of course, went to RB Salzburg, and the rest was history. Challand signed for Go-Head Eagles for 200k just to get loaned back to Norway. Don't worry, we'll hear more from Schaland later in the video. Very good. In Krumen's first season with Go Ahead Eagles, he somehow qualified for Europe. The caveat is that the team begins their adventure in Conference League second round qualifying at the end of July. So while the big boys got to go to Ibiza and only had to play friendlies, this side basically had one month off from a grueling campaign and had to go again with a group of players weaker than last year. Fontaine went back to Celta Vigo and top scorer Capado refused to join the club permanently. It seemed like former Bayern players didn't enjoy commitment as Abe Aiden also left and joined Spurs on a free transfer. It wasn't looking good for Krumen, especially with Dario rejecting an initial offer. It took a lot of convincing for him to sign the contract, but for a fee of 475, K, Dario remained. Angela Bruckner also stayed, going against his former teammates. Before the qualifiers, a couple of free center backs arrived from released English clubs. Billy Cumetio from Liverpool and the ever so pacey Malachi Fig and Walcott from Spurs. A goal scorer was still needed, and Krumen found one with Eredivisie experience. Manfred Ugalde, who was on loan at Twente last season, arrived from Lomel SK for 1.4 million. A bit of a risk, but hopefully his scoring tally of 6 could be improved on. If the Conference League qualifiers were anything to go off, then maybe a goldmine was smacked. The club entered the competition in the second round, and the opponent was FC Dinamo Otto Tiraspol of Moldova. Each round is a two-legged fixture, and if you lose, no European football. In Ugalde's debut, he scored a hat-trick in the first 19 minutes. A dream debut, which led to a 4-2 victory eventually a 7-3 win on aggregate. The next round looked to be more of a challenge. The club drew Lugano of Switzerland, who finished in third, ahead of Basel. They had guys like Lars Lucas Mai, but goalkeeping wasn't their strong suit. While they did equalize, Lindhorst took the lead back, and a returning Lucas Capato extended the lead. Yes, he decided to come back on loan. The fee was cheap, so it was worth it. The second leg was nerve-wracking for go-ahead, as Lugano at home were able to score twice before the half, thanks to Mohamed Amura. However, there was no stopping the old man John Boy, whose physicals did not completely diminish yet, as he scored two off corners. There was one more set of fixtures to get through in order for this team to compete in the prestigious Conference League. What are you doing here? Somehow, they finished behind recently promoted Casa Pia, which meant players who could compete with the very best of the Eredivisie would be Krumen's obstacle. Despite the quality of the opposition, it was Braga who looked inferior. That's because they should have been losing with all these chances. Instead, they scored off a corner 10 minutes prior to halftime. Go ahead responded exceptionally, equalizing right after with Ugalde cleaning this mess. Braga were hanging by a thread before everything would collapse in their yard. Braga then scored three completely against the run of play. How? How? What? what? Despite great chances arriving for Go Ahead, Braga somehow escaped with a 4 1 victory despite the Eagles XG being at 4.16. In the home fixture, Dario was able to score a brace. With the last quarter of the match remaining, only this Dario chance came, and it'd be Braga going to the Conference League, where they lost to AZ Alkmaar in the round of 16. So with no Europe and a squad with potentially too many players, Krumen decided to bring in two more midfielders for less than 500k combined. Basse Ngom from Senegal and Jobert from Brazil. He also sold two useless wingers for nearly a million combined. With the extra hard work in preseason resulting in no European football, you couldn't blame the squad for being in 17th place 8 match days in. Okay, maybe you can, but AZ, Feyenoord, and PSV are tough fixtures, and Twente started the campaign on fire. The club even made a three-goal comeback against Utrecht, thanks to an Ugalde hat-trick. However, with newly promoted Almere City giving us a tough time, confidence wasn't going to improve when nobody scored against Volendam. With a trip to the Johan Cruyff Arena next, that confidence wasn't high. Ajax were relatively dominant last year, but were somewhat struggling despite having the same exact team. With a heavy loss to PSG just days prior, they may not have been in the best headspace. All their shots were vapid, and after the 15 minute break, Go Ahead completely caught them off guard as Ugalde broke free and took the lead. Sadly, nice things didn't last long as after this ball hit the flag and stayed in, Ajax will go on and win a penalty. That equalized the match, but it'd be the only way they would find the net as it ended 
one all. A great result which brought confidence back to the side. We are a threat. We are going to be able to mount a title challenge. It also helped that they had a weaker bunch of games upcoming. 17th place Excelsior were defeated with a lone goal by Adekanye. Bottom of the table Villain Fae were easily handled by Dalrio, another Adekanye strike, and a brace from Capado. Both won without Luder, the starting keeper. Although that may have been a problem versus now 17th place NSA. Sekelenberg was at the club, but his reflexes had him react to shots like 8 seconds late. So 201 centimeter tall Tim Spiegerman, who was 23 years younger than his counterpart, was tossed in. There wasn't much he could do on the opponent's first strike because nobody decided to press Usama Tanane, but Krumen blamed him for the second. You think you're ready, you're not ready. I personally would have been pissed off at Capato earlier on in the play. He should have made a pass to Adekanye, but his fraudulence was covered up by a goal that had no impact on the result. In December, a Dalrio brace arrived versus Vitesse, followed by a disappointing home draw to FC Eidenhoven. Sparta Rotterdam following saw Ugalde score in the first minute, leading to a go-ahead clean sheet. Finally, Kroenigan saw the real Lucas Capado, as he earned himself a hat-trick. Ajax then would unfortunately defeat Krumen's men in the Dutch Cup second round, bringing that chapter to yet another quick finish. While the table wasn't even on matches, after 17 of them, Go Ahead still had the possibility for a European football, sitting only 4 points behind PSV. Hotoka! In Football Manager, a nasty injury can potentially derail a season. Go Ahead Eagles saw Bass Kuipers get a damaged Achilles tendon, taking out the starting left back for the remainder of the campaign. That left inexperienced players to cover, and in reality, they're not good enough to be starting. So the coach searched for a replacement and found a player. Let's introduce to you Project 64, turning Super Mario Dorgelis from a midfielder into a wingback. It was a cheap loan due to his wages, and the buy option was at 1.4 million. Now he would have a hard time adapting to the position as he was dropping stinker after stinker, but by the end, he'd figure it out. Although, it may have been pretty naive to throw him into the gauntlet of hell. Ajax, Feyenoord, and PSV back to back to back. Krupen thought he was having a nightmare when he first saw it, but it was the reality. Before that all began, Volendam showed a glimpse to the future. Two conceded off corners, and this mess of a goal all happened within 35 minutes. Dario could only score one, so a loss to start out the new year, and absolutely no momentum walking into the Hanshuen van der Hel. It started with walking lose Ajax at home, which saw Dario score in the 4th minute. It seemed all good until seconds prior to the half, where Ngong seemingly gets shot in the middle of the pitch, and Ajax are off to the races. Kenneth Taylor found Tony Martinez in behind, who tuck home the equalizer. 15 minutes after the interval, Super Mario's lack of understanding at wingback showed, as his pressing decision led to Bergeis having all this space to find the lead. Some subs were made, including Ramens coming on to receive a pass from Adekanye for a 68th minute equalizer. One minute later, Ajax took the lead. Tony Martinez would immediately find another for his hat trick, which all came after an incredible amount of passes from the Amsterdam club. Nothing in response, as Ajax would go on and win the Eredivisie once again. Feyenoord managed by Jan Dahl Thomason seemed tight for a while. Although with them selling Kokchu to Porto, they were able to invest in good players such as Emil Forsberg, Matthias Norman, and bloody Donny van der Beek. Oh, piss off! Dude, what you do? He's bringing Donny van der Beek on! Let's just say they invested well because the match ended 4-0. Nothing to see here. Well, the team drew PSV earlier in the campaign away from home, so surely they could do at least that at home. It wasn't looking that way though, with the chances PSV were missing. However, they would find a way to get the opener in the second half with this initial header finding another head. Gohead's response was as pathetic as Krumen's suit, with the score remaining the same. Those results dropped Gohead into 12th, 15 points behind 5th. He fell off. He really did fall off. So once again, the sole chance for European football was through the playoff. Unlike last season, it is now either 5th to 8th or 6th to 9th, depending on who wins the Dutch Cup. All thanks to an extra European spot given to the Eredivisie. The team kept frauding it up with a draw to Willem Fey rescued by Ugalde and a 0-0 draw to Vitesse only happening because Müller made 11 saves. Still, that's more drop points, even with the new center back being signed at the end of January for 800k. The scoring department in this club struggled, and the Hirenveen match was a perfect example. Go ahead, Eagles won 4 2. Oh, so nice. With an own goal and three penalties. Yeah, I thought Krubin might have bribed the referee, but is he that desperate? A 3 0 loss to FC Eidenhoven may lead to that answer. The table looked pitiful, and outside of Dario, 
the goal scoring was underwhelming. Ugalde looked more and more like a fraud, especially when it was learned that he dreads playing in big matches. Capato was also a shadow of the man he used to be. So who could be the savior in this side? With title challengers FC Twente coming up, Ruben thought, yeesh, fuck it, let's start the big Norwegian up front. A brace versus Twente led to a stunning victory, and the man from Norway would score again versus Utrecht. Unfortunately, they would equalize in the 51st, but not too long after, the ref was feeling a little harsh and sent off Luke Browers. Still, Utrecht were holding on until the 90th minute, where this was called, and VAR said, Sure, that's a pen. Lucas Capato would score the game winner, giving another impressive win or go ahead. With the next three matches against teams getting threatened by relegation, you'd have to imagine those would all be wins. Things turned around in the second after changing the mentality to attacking. Super Mario was able to find not just Adekanye, but our guy Shalant to equalize the match. Sadly, Dario missed a few good chances in the half, which cost go ahead a victory. NSA had a similar story. They scored first. Walter! <gasps> Shalant equalized, but chances were wasted on more than one occasion. By the way, all these misses were in the first 20 minutes. It seems like I'm plagiarizing the script of Groundhog Day because versus Excelsior, a team that did get relegated, they scored first! An absolute banger to be fair, and Go Ahead had to retaliate once again. Off a throw-in, it'd be Idzis to equalize the score. He began to get minutes in defensive midfield, as his performances warranted it. Then, in the final few minutes of regular time, Adekanye found Rashawn Fernandez in behind, who scored his first goal of the season to win the match. Shalom was quiet again, which was fine, but against Kambur, he would pull his hamstring. This came at a bad time because Ugalde was only returning from a back strain and has been crap. Lucas Capato has also been crap, so Krumen decided to get his match sharpness up by playing him in a reserves friendly. He proceeded to break his leg, with Byron immediately cancelling the loan. Returning to Kambur, I've seen better defending in Sunday League. It says we'll make up for it by scoring one himself. Then, let me introduce to you Eredivisie goalkeepers. This time, it wasn't against Goalhead. However, the bad defending return for a Kambur equalizer. They almost won it, but more points dropped. With Feyenoord winning the Dutch Cup, 9th place would be enough for a European playoff spot, which was conveniently the position Goalhead Eagles were in. A victory versus Kroenigan actually raised the club into 8th, although with 11th place Hirin being 2 points behind and a match versus AZ Alkmaar next, it was going to be close. Never mind. Just like that, a red card and two Alkmaar goals sent the club from 8th to 11th with one match remaining. The good news was that the fixture was at home to Sparta Rotterdam and Schaland was back. Still, even if Go Ahead win, it might not be enough. Nice. Go Ahead were able to respond with, of course, Schaland equalizing before the half ended. More goals were still needed, but in the following 45, Rashawn had his chance tackled away, another one stopped, but nothing more. It didn't matter in the end, as Go Ahead would have needed to win by 4 to finish in 9th. Was Crewman a one season wonder? Was he a Fontaine merchant who couldn't set up a defense properly? Probably, but with the board giving him a new contract right before the new year, he's there to stay, and he's established Go Ahead as an Eredivisie side. There's a lot more questions than answers at the moment with barely anyone standing out in the team, but will Crewman blame himself? No, but he did sack the fitness coach. <laughs>